first time I ever heard of Great Old Broads for Wilderness, I was looking through, I think, a Sunset magazine. I saw this picture of these older women profiled against the, a desert backdrop, and I thought, oh, that's what I, what I want to do. <laughs> that's, who, that's who I want to be. Great Old Broads, that implies a certain type of woman. You know, like she's, she's great and she's older and she has a passion for what's next. The reason why we say Old Broads is because it was back at the 25th anniversary of the Wilderness Act that Senator Orrin Hatch said that wilderness was of no value because it was not accessible to the elderly and the disabled. Our founding executive director, Susan Tache, said, there's no way that he's gonna speak for us, and we're a bunch of older women, we're out here hiking, we're out here enjoying, and whether we can get out there or not at some point in the future, we still wanna know that wilderness exists and that wild places are here for all of us at any age. So when I got out here for the first time, I put up my tent very proudly that I had just bought. I didn't know you were supposed to really make sure that that tent was tacked down or, you know, I don't even know the name of those things now. <laughs> anyway. Stakes. Stakes, thank you. So we do our work and we come back. My tent is gone. It's been a wind. <laughs> so it was a, a real big learning curve. But I fell in love with broads on that trip because I thought if they can put up with this woman from the Midwest who has no clue what she's doing, I love this group. We are out in the woods to educate our members and ourselves about the importance of connecting wild habitat so that uh, predators and, and other species can move um, over time and migrate to new areas. We're in Colorado's wildest corner. So this is a perfect area for the potential for reintroduction of large carnivores like wolves. I think there's many reasons of why we should have a serious dialogue about reintroducing wolves to Colorado. In its wariness of people, the wolf epitomizes our predominant contemporary image of nature. Nature as separate from human beings and human beings as divorced from nature. Where we are, there are no wolves. Where the wolf lives, there is wilderness. I asked one of the wolf um, experts this morning, actually, at breakfast, so if I'm a person out in the wilderness and I'm camping and I'm all by myself and a pack of wolves happens to come by, what do I do? He said, first of all, they probably won't come by. And secondly, don't do anything because they, they care less about you. So that helped me because, you know, I don't know enough about wolves. It feels good to me to know that they're wanting to reintroduce them. But I wasn't sure if I wanted to run into any. <laughs> but now I feel much more comfortable. I went up to Yellowstone to see the wolves a couple of winters ago. There is something about those creatures that speak to me very, very deeply. They're such an integral part of that environment up there. They made such a difference since their reintroduction that of course I'd love to see it happen here. Why should we bring wolves back? Scientifically, it makes sense. We need that kind of balance back in the ecosystem, but mostly because this is one of the few places remaining that we can. This Southwestern Colorado makes sense. I think we have history. We've been around for a long time, age-wise. <laughs> and the broads have been around for about 28 years now. We've seen how things in history have worked or don't work. Women do, of a certain age, acquire a voice. And I like the, the changing culture of the what we see as older women. It's been a great adventure to come out here and just learn all this stuff and see these lands which are still viable. You know, I remember when I first came out and one of the things I said to my friends back home is they're still fighting out here. <laughs> <laughs>